the biggest Saharan dust plume of the season. It's on its way to the Caribbean and the United States. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and in this video, we're going to track it to the Caribbean and the U.S. Then we're also going to talk about the big-time heat that's still in the Deep South. That is going to expand. Then we're going to go back to the tropics. The remnants of Cindy could redevelop. And also, we have more stormy weather in the Caribbean, so stick around toward the end of the video for that Caribbean weather update. All right, what you see on your screen right now is the satellite channel that depicts the Saharan air layer off to the right of your screen is Africa, and then off to the left is going to be the Caribbean. So we see that right there. There are the Lesser Antilles. Here is Puerto Rico. Here is Trinidad and Tobago. You see all the orange and red. That is the dust that is pushing towards the leeward and windward islands. By the end of June, start of July, that is going to be there. And then there's even a bigger push that's getting ready to roll off of Africa. And that's the one that could make it all the way towards Cuba, parts of the North Gulf Coast, Florida, the Southeast United States. So that is something that we're going to be watching down the line. Now, again, the Saharan air layer, it's there all the time. It happens. It's the dust anyway is most prolific in June and July. It's one of the reasons that the main development region of the Atlantic, which is right out in here, stays on the quieter side. Now, we've had atypically little dust out there this time of the year so far this hurricane season. It's one of the reasons why we were able to generate Brett and Cindy in such a weird spot for hurricane season. I want to show you the model here. This is going to be the relative humidity. So this isn't the dust per se, but it's the dry air associated with it. And there we go on June 30th through July 1st, and you see some of that drier air pushing in. But notice back, well back towards the Cabo Verde Islands and into Africa, there's an even thicker plume. And that is what is going to ride over. Watch this. As we roll into the first couple of days of July, you see that big thick plume heading towards the uh, the leeward islands into puerto rico dominican republic as well so that's going to help to keep us dry which i know in the islands we could use some rain same for us in puerto rico as well now getting into the united states it typically becomes a little less prolific as it gets towards the western caribbean and gulf of mexico unless it's a rare occasion you see the drier air associated here through jamaica through the yucatan peninsula the florida keys Turks and Caicos and Bahamas. We're looking at now July 7th through 8th. So post 4th of July, we're likely going to have that plume get into the Western Caribbean and then start to slide up into the North Gulf Coast. This will likely help to enhance our sunrise and sunsets. If it's prolific enough, we'd have some dirty cars as well if it rains and you leave those little brown marks on the car. By the time we get, get it thick enough, we start to see the, the brown dots on the cars. All right, so enough about the dust. We're going to talk about the heat in the United States. It has been insane over the last week or two, especially in Texas. And the reason for that is this big area of high pressure that's hanging out right over Texas. Big Omega block. You see it here. Dip out west. Looks like the Greek letter Omega. Ridge in the central part of the country. Then another dip in the jet stream out over the northeast and mid-atlantic this is the reason for that severe weather the other day yesterday in parts of the northeast now big chunk of high pressure watch it i'm going to draw it one more time it's sitting right there watch this big area of red as i put this into motion notice how it kind of shifts a little bit over the north gulf coast over the southeast u.s so we're looking at this big corner of red right there the heat that's been bottled up in Texas, in parts of New Mexico, central Mexico, is going to start to shift east over the next couple of days, really as we close out June and get into July. I want to show you the National Weather Service hazard map from, from PivotalWeather.com. All these pink shaded counties right here, that is an excessive heat warning. In the orange, that is a heat advisory. You see the excessive heat warnings have been extended towards a about New Orleans, almost to the Florida Panhandle. The heat advisories now extend into North Florida, and that means it's going to be dangerously hot, but not as excessive as the counties shaded in parishes shaded in purple. But then you notice this big chunk of rust color here. This is an excessive heat watch. That means that we are, we're going to have dangerously hot conditions possible over the next 36 hours this means it's going to be so hot the national weather service is giving everybody kind of a 36 hour lead time to let them know so what does that mean 
here's the deal. I want to show you the temperatures over the next couple of days for the country. And you see here the big time heat still surging back into Kansas through Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Florida Panhandle. And then, of course, all in Texas. Those are the actual air temperatures, triple digits by far. Now, factor in the humidity. I want you to just picture again the heat index, how it feels on your skin. That is going to be about 10-ish degrees hotter than what you see on your screen right here. And the heat index becomes important because your body cools off by sweating. When there is more moisture in the atmosphere, it's hotter for your body. It's harder for your body to sweat and then evaporatively cool that sweat. So that's when it starts to become dangerous. That's when heat exhaustion and heat stroke become much more prevalent and happen a lot faster. So it's really, really important that we continue to pay attention, especially in the deep south. I know it's summer. I know it's always hot. But again, when you start to see excessive heat warnings in play from the National Weather Service, it's that level up that, okay, I need to make sure that I'm taking care of myself. This is uh, getting into, that was Wednesday, by the way. This is Thursday, June 29th. And you see this little dome of heat kind of expand further north towards St. Louis as well. And then there's that further east jog again that we were starting to talk about when I was showing you that upper level high move across the south. So it's still blazing hot in Texas, but now we have triple digit heat towards the Florida Panhandle again up towards St. Louis, Little Rock into Arkansas. And remember, add about 10 degrees. So by Wednesday and Thursday, the heat index could be approaching 115, 120 in New Orleans. Same deal in places like Arkansas and Missouri, even into Florida. So it is going to be really, really hot. Now watch this. We're going to see it expand further. This is going to be uh, Thursday, June 29th now. We have a lot more of that heat again pushing up. And as we move into Friday, that was the overnight lows. Look at this. We have almost triple digit heat. It's really hard to get it to be 100 degrees in central florida because we have the relatively cooler gulf and cooler atlantic on each side but we're going to make a run for it because we have that big area of high pressure that promotes sinking air and when air sinks it warms up and just kind of bakes all the areas that are under the influence of that so we've got a lot going on over the next couple of days now with that heat dome that's chilling in the central part of the country where the warm really the blazing hot air meet the relatively cooler air that's where we could have some stronger thunderstorms so this is going to be the severe weather outlook for june 27th so that's going to be for later on on tuesday remember we had that big high right here ridge riding storms you see that right there on top of the ridge of high pressure we have that enhanced risk that level three out of five right there on your scale so we could have some nasty thunderstorms develop and then move through the extreme northern Texas and the extreme western Oklahoma panhandles. There's Oklahoma City for reference. And then right on through southern Kansas and then kind of work its way into northwest and north central Arkansas. So again, be on the lookout for a nasty little complex of storms to develop later on the 27th in the afternoon and kind of ride right over that big ridge of high pressure also another shot for severe weather in parts of extreme western iowa southern south dakota and then north central nebraska so again all related to that big pattern that omega block pattern just like that and of course we still have a low opportunity for severe weather towards new york city new jersey philadelphia and then right into the mid-atlantic coast still because of that big dip in the jet stream i don't think it's going to be as widespread or as significant as what we saw yesterday but still be weather aware again in the northeast for a few just isolated strong thunderstorms again that that is that marginal risk that one out of five so still the opportunity there but not as high as what the folks in the plains are going to see all right i want to get you back to the tropics if you are tuning in from the caribbean a couple of weird things going on of course it is storming towards trinidad and tobago and then into the windward island so from saint lucia dominica getting into Martinique, Grenada as well. There we go. And St. Uh, Vincent and the Grenadines, we're getting some thunderstorms, gusty thunderstorms. There is no tropical storm. This is just a tropical wave. This is actually what we highlighted on this channel a little bit earlier, a couple of videos ago. Again, we talked about that it likely wasn't going to consolidate, but we would still increase our moisture. We're also seeing that in around Barbados. So this cluster here is a tropical wave kind of entering the Caribbean as we speak. So it's going to continue to bring us scattered showers and thunderstorms from Tuesday the 27th into Wednesday the 28th. 
I want to point something else out too. Remember this? That cluster of thunderstorms is what's left of Tropical Storm Cindy. It is no longer Cindy, and I'm going to show you why. Look very, very closely. Do you see it? Do you see it? It's right there. See that swirl right in the center of your screen? So that is the kind of ghost swirl of Cindy. All of the thunderstorms associated with that center are blown off or way over here. The shear just kind of ripped the two apart. The two to be able to thrive and intensify and really survive need to be co-located. They need to be on top of each other. So the low-level circulation in a different spot that it's mid-level circulation. There are indications, though, over the next couple of days that we could have Cindy as it works its way north and then past Bermuda start to get its act together again. And that is why the National Hurricane Center kind of re-highlighted this. They did this yesterday, still a 30% shot for development, but there was that little naked swirl of Cindy, and it could, as it moves past Bermuda, develop again as it moves towards Nova Scotia. Now, the big question is, all right, what's it going to be named? Is it going to stay Cindy or be Cindy again? Or is it going to be the next name storm of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season? Since that swirl that I just showed you is still there, hasn't been completely broken apart, the Hurricane Center would likely, if it does regenerate, be named Cindy. If the Hurricane Center, though, determines that over the next 24 to 48 hours prior to that potential regeneration, if it loses that low-level circulation completely and then reforms, then it would get the next name of the 2023 hurricane season. I know this was a long video. I know that we were bouncing all over the place, but there's a lot to talk about. Again, huge ridge in the central part of the United States that have been dominating the weather across the country over the past week. It's going to continue to do so. And then again, the Caribbean, we've been dealing with, of course, Brett, now this tropical wave. Sydney's not going to really impact uh, Bermuda, just a few thunderstorms. Bermuda's kind of hidden right in there. But Nova Scotia, we could get some rain from this, and that could actually be a good thing pending that doesn't get too strong because of those crazy wildfires that have been burning on the southern tip of Nova Scotia. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. And if you do love talking about the weather and tracking it, hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you next time.